All right, let's put it all together here. Another one of the super famous terms that we will encounter here is sequence of partial sums. So let me try to explain a little bit of, uh, of what, what we think about when we say this. Um, again, recall from previous chapters, uh, one of the most important ideas that we learned just not too long ago was the idea of improper intervals. And that is these intervals that are really, really long or really, really tall. Uh, often they look like this. And I'll give you a picture representation. Um, often they represent some area that looks uh, more or less like this. You've got some function here and often it ta tapers down. But the trouble is that you're going from zero and you're going all the way to infinity and trying to find some sort of representation, numerical representation for that entire area. Often these integrals represent exactly, exactly something like this. The trouble is that often going to infinity seems to be a big feat, and so too big as a matter of fact. So the remedy was that, if you recall, was to break it up. We would break it up and say, you know what, maybe we should go, instead of going all the way to infinity, maybe we should go to um, just some stop at some point A. So rather than going all the way to infinity, such as you did here, all the way to infinity, The idea was we maybe we could stop at some point A here and take a little rest and go from 0 to A. And that might be a good way to start it. And, and then, of course, once you get this limit, the, the idea was to compute this and then add a little limit here, limit magic, as A goes towards infinity, effectively computing this limit over here, but not all at once. That was That's what we did. Uh, for improper integrals. That's exactly exactly the same idea that we have to use for partial for sums, for infinite sums. Before we had infinite integrals, now we have infinite sums. So the analogy would play out something like this. Now we have something like this. Um, an infinite sum of numbers such as 2 to the third to the n, and here you can even make a picture of them. The picture would go something like this. For n is equal to 0, the first item that you're adding is 1. So you could think about it as a block that's one wide and one tall. For the second one, when n is equal to one, your height would be two thirds. So you're adding a total area of. Uh, so this is two thirds that height right there. This area was one. This one would be. Uh, the width would be one. The height would be two thirds. So the total area would be two thirds. The next one, of course, would be two thirds square. And so to add 1 plus 2 thirds plus 2 thirds square, etc., etc., amounts to adding this area, which of course is not that different from adding the area in the integral, except that this one has a little bit more sharp corners. Uh, but the idea would be the same. This goes on forever and ever and ever. You're adding, when you add these terms from 0 all the way to infinity, you're adding a bunch of these tiny, tiny little areas. So there's an immediate connection between the infinite series here and the infinite integral that we did in the previous chapter. The solution to deal with this will be exactly exactly the same as the solution that we used to deal with this. I'll remind you, the solution was to not go all the way to infinity, instead stop somewhere, say at A, and just try to compute the integral from 0 to A. And once you're done that, use your limit ideas, take in the limit as A goes towards infinity to, to complete the sum, to complete the integral. That will be exactly exactly the same idea that we will use here. So here it would play out like this. Instead of doing this, we would we would opt to um, integrate something like this. Let me go with say yellow. Instead of doing this, we would go with the sum from 0 all the way to k of 2 thirds raised to the n. And that would look almost the same as before. It would look like this, it would look like this, it would look like this. Except we wouldn't go all the way to infinity as we did here. Instead we would stop at some k and say it will, I will only add the terms from 0 to k and I will compute this sum. And this sum where before we called it from integral from 0 to a, today we're calling it the partial sum. That's what a partial sum is. It's a sequence where, hey, I'm just adding first k terms. And of course, to try to get to this one, you can imagine what will happen here. We've added the first k terms, and just as before, what happened here, we took the limit as a goes towards infinity. We want to 
try to handle this one by saying, hey, it would be the limit of my partial sums as my k, of course, goes to infinity. That's how we will handle the infinite sums. We stop at some point k, we call that a partial sum. We never call this a partial integral, but really that's what it was. I, I mean, maybe it would have been better. I didn't write the whole stuff. I didn't write this entire story, but if, if I was writing the story, just to be consistent, I would have called these guys partial integrals. Because you're just going part of it from 0 to A. And that's, that would be a perfect analogy so that this becomes just the same concept. We're doing partial sum. Okay, as an example, let's try let's try our luck with one of them. Uh, say we wanted to do um, this one right here. So to to compute this sum, we will first find a partial sum. That would look something like this. I'm gonna go with this kind of writing. So so I'm gonna try to do s k, which is equal to the summation. S k goes from zero. Sorry, that's not true. As n goes from zero and stops at k for two-thirds raised to the n. That would be equal to, of course, uh, zero plus two-thirds to the, uh, yeah, let's try that again. When you plug in zero, you get one. So that would be one plus two-thirds plus two-thirds square all the way up to two-thirds raised to the k. And of course, that is an easy sum. It's a geometric one. I can do that with my brain tied behind my back. Oh wait, it's there already. That, uh, minus one, all over two thirds minus one. And so that's my partial sums. And now of course I want the sum, the actual sum would be the limit as k goes towards infinity of my partial sums. That would be the limit as k goes towards infinity of two thirds raised to the k plus one minus one all over two thirds minus one. Clearly this goes to zero for large case because you're doing two thirds times two thirds times two thirds. So why don't we mark that? Uh, can we agree that goes to zero? And that would leave us with uh, negative one over two thirds minus one which is equal to negative one over negative one third which of course is three. Duh. There you go. We computed the actual sum using partial sums in much, much the same way that before we computed infinite integrals using um, these partial integrals. It's exactly, exactly the same idea. Okay, now uh, I think that will do it for explanation of partial sums. Come back for a final thought on, on what this all means, okay?